the uh, tourism destinations remain closed, but now, uh, now that the, the regulations have been relaxed a bit, um, it is expected to yield economic spin-offs. Joining us now, we are joined by the tourism minister, uh, tourism, pardon me, <laughs> MEC, Economic and Development MEC, Mr. Mlungi Simvoko. Mr. Mvoko, thank you very much for joining us, sir. Uh, how much of a problem did the lockdown cause into the uh, tourism sector? Uh, good morning, Yanga, and uh, um, morning to the viewers. It actually affected us hugely in the province because remember in, in all the levels uh, tourism was uh, um, the money of the products were closed as a result of which um, uh, many of them did not operate and so many people that lost their jobs and some of the products will not even be able to recover and come back uh, to, 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 to full operation uh, as a result of which we were compelled as the, as the, as the department um, to, to, to set aside something to, 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 to deal with that. You must remember also when the, the Department of Tourism, the National Department uh, in its relief, set aside funds for the relief, we as uh, many of our, oper of, our to of our products applied for it. But there are quite a number of them who were actually accepted but never received anything uh, due to the fact that they, you know, there wasn't any more money. So um, it, is, it, is, it, it affected us hugely, Yanga. O only those that were very strong that it actually anticipated a, a situation of this nature that will survive after, after I mean, after when we get into level one and, and there are no more restrictions. Now, uh, the province is set to bounce back. We will get the weather in areas such as Hawksburg. It's inviting. What are some of the plans do you, you have in place as the department to ensure that it remains uh, stable during this period? Um, as you indicated earlier, the, the theme is... Uh, um, uh, economic development, I mean, rural development and tourism. Uh, so the focus is, going, is mainly going to be on, on, rural, on rural development. Uh, the department is actually has a number of uh, projects, but let me just take you one on rural development, uh, where it is multifaceted in, in that it combines a number of things at the same time. For instance, they, we have a, a trail, a hiking trail from Port St. John's to Port Alfred one continuous hiking trail it depends on where do you want to step off the hiking trail and as you step off you get an experience uh, of the culture and the heritage of where you would go into homestays the depart the the the, the, the the tourism agency has gone into extensive um, uh, efforts in making sure that they train people, uh, you know, in the tourism in, in those homestays to be able to to welcome and treat those people and give them that experience that they need. So they would train them for that. So when you step off in the in the in the hiking trail, you get there, you get the culture, you get to go and collect woods, at, uh, you know, in the forest and come back. You get to witness or or see people. Um, um, uh, you know, with uh, kneading the dough for your for your for your bread, so they, they've done it in such a way that it gives you a combination of of experiences. But what I like about it is that it also empowers our people uh, in those homestays to make them to be ready. Because this is the only way we're going to uh, to bounce back is to ensure that those that have suffered big time during COVID are given not only the financial assistance, but they are also given the skills that they will need. And in order to unlock rural t uh, tourism, you need a combination of those. But partly, we were in discussion with the MEC for Arts and Culture saying, uh, because September is also a heritage month, let's look at how we can combine this. So, yes, we are preparing uh, to ensure that uh, we welcome everyone coming to the Eastern Cape. And we, we are saying we are open to it. Uh, one of the criticisms the province faces, MEC, is that it has more to offer, but it, it is not properly packaged uh, for people like from Joburg and other provinces to come in with an, with, with an interest. What are you doing to reconcile that? Yes, it's one of the plans that we're having now. Uh, I think in that packaging you must move with time, Siang. I think what, where we have been, might have been lagging is that we were not moving with times. So what they have packaged in the Eastern Cape, the, 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 the ECPTA, what they have packaged is also to ensure that we do marketing at a higher level and we use the technology of today. Um, I was talking to the CEO this morning, he's saying if you go to Joburg now uh, at the airport, they are there. 
these are new boards that are there now they've been put uh, by ECPTA so we've set aside some funds for that and they've uh, and, and they're st they've started working because the problem is you can't try and m you can't market at your destination and, or, or when you, people arrive in East London or in, in Port Elizabeth. It's too late. Those people know exactly where they are going. So we must try and uh, 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 do that marketing away from this. So people, when they come uh, into Port Elizabeth, they actually have been lured one way or the other by our marketing. So, yes, we have set aside some funds and we have started with that. That's why if you go to Joburg, you go to Cape Town, if you go to Durban now, we are, we are already there doing exactly what you are saying as we have identified it as one of those areas we have to do more. The number of deaths in